Hi everybody. You probably know that the multiplication of natural numbers satisfies the commutative property. In other words, the order of the factors doesn't alter the product. But do you know how to prove that? That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Let's go. The commutative property says that if n and m are natural numbers, then it's true that n times m is equal to m times n. We normally just assume this, but would you know how to get here from here to here? Let's see how we can do it. You may have seen a graphic demonstration of this result. Look, here's a rectangular grid of n times m. And if you turn it around, the rectangular number it represents doesn't change. Here we have m times n. And so you can see visually that n by m is the same as m by n. Well, pictures like this are fine to give a general impression. But in the end, they're not quite rigorous. We're going to take a different approach. We're going to prove the commutative property of the product analytically. And we'll do it using the method of induction, a technique that we explained in another video. Let's start with the case where either n is 1 or m is 1. For example, if m equals 1, we have that n multiplied by 1 is equal to 1 multiplied by n. On one side, we have n times 1, and of course, if you add 1 to itself n times, then the result is n, which is 1 times n. Or if you prefer, the equality comes straight from the fact that 1 is the neutral element of the product of natural numbers. So, we have that in the case where one of the factors is 1, the commutative rule for products holds true. Now we'll apply the induction hypothesis in the case where we have any two natural numbers n and m. We'll use the induction hypothesis in a different way than usual by supposing that the commutative property is satisfied for the product of two numbers whose sum is less than the sum of our factors, n plus m. That is, we'll assume that as long as you have a pair of numbers whose sum is less than n plus m, it obeys the commutative property of multiplication. We'll consider n multiplied by m, where n and m are both greater than 1, since we've already shown the result when either factor is 1. The trick is to have factors whose sum is less than n plus m. If we subtract 1 and add 1 from the first factor, we have n minus 1 plus 1. We still have just n, because we haven't varied the first factor, times m. Now we just apply the distributive property, which is easy to prove, and we'll just assume it, to give n minus 1 times m plus 1 times m. Notice that in the first product, the sum of the factors is n minus 1 plus m, which is 1 smaller than n plus m. Now we can apply the induction hypothesis, which says that these factors commute. We have m multiplied by n minus 1, plus 1 times m, or m times 1. There's a common factor of m, which multiplies n minus 1 plus 1, which is m times n. Good. We've shown that n multiplied by m is equal to m multiplied by n, and we've demonstrated the commutative property of products. Maybe you found this method of using uh, the induction hypothesis a bit like magic. But rest assured, it's a technique commonly used in mathematics to demonstrate results. Now let's go back to our earlier demonstration of the commutative property, which involved rotating a rectangle. But let's formalize it. Here's how. We'll work with the Cartesian product and consider two sets, A and B. A is the set 1, 2, all the way up to n, with n elements, and B is the set 1, 2, all the way up to m. As you know, the Cartesian product of A and B 
is the set of pairs in which the first element is from A and the second is from B. The cardinality of A times B, where times means the Cartesian product, is the total number of pairs, where the first element comes from A and the second from B, and is equal to N times M. We're keeping things simple here, but the topics of sets and cardinals belong to set theory, which is a deep and important area of mathematics about which there were some very serious controversies in the last century. The Cartesian product of A and B has the cardinality N times M, and in the same way the Cartesian product of B and A has the cardinality M times N. So if we can show that a times B has the same number of elements as B times A, we'll have shown that N times M is equal to M times N. If the two sets have the same cardinality, this means they're equal in size, that there's a bijection or one-to-one -one correspondence between the two. And this, in fact, is the case. The mapping of A times B onto B times A such that every ij corresponds with ji is both injective and superjective. In other words, there is a bijective mapping and therefore n times m is equal to m times n. What we've done here is to formalize our original illustration. Instead of swapping rows and columns in a rectangle, we've shown a one-to-one -one correspondence of the elements in the Cartesian products of two sets. In this channel, we go to the heart of mathematics and question what's often just taken for granted. We prove things from basic principles, once or even twice. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon.